Hi, good morning everyone. Namaskar. This is Ankur Vora, a higher education consultant based out of New Delhi, India. Today I thought I'll do a five minute review of some numbers with regards to international student mobility to Indian universities. If some of you remember my last video, we had spoken about the international student mobility outbound from India. Today we will be talking about the inbound international students to Indian institutions. Uh, like last time we discussed the open doors report that had been recently released. Today our basis for this discussion will for be the all, all India survey of higher education report that came out in 2020. That is the latest version of the report that I could find out, but that also will give us some sense of where and how uh, international students are on campuses. A bit about myself, I am uh, a, a leading higher education consultant based out of New Delhi, India. I have in my past roles, I have worked to set up international outreach for universities such as Ashoka University and OP Jindal Global University. My last uh, assignment was as business director for C Alpha, which is a leading ed tech platform. Uh, I set up their India business operations and recently moved on to set up my own venture. I'm now a freelance consultant helping universities making sense of India as a market and also ensuring that the practices for student recruitment adhere to that one principle that we all live by and that is making sure that we give unbiased advice to our students which is in their benefit not a biased advice so that is my motto so let us quickly get into uh, then some numbers so inbound international students to India I see a lot of the director for admissions and outreach being inundated with a lot of proposals from vendors, third party event organizers on they should be going to Middle East, they should be traveling to Africa, they should be going to Southeast Asia. But unfortunately, the market intelligence for making those decisions is lacking. And that's why I find a lot of the times I see universities from India ending up in destinations which they should not have been going to in the first place. Now, if you end up in that destinations, you will end up spending a lot of money, a lot of your time, a lot of your efforts, but at the end, the result will be very negligible. So please stay with me through this next five minutes. If you are a director for admissions and outreach, or if you are running a university, you will know whether you should be doing international outreach or not. And if you should be doing international outreach, which countries you should be reaching out to? So let's deep dive. So the total number of foreign national students enrolled in Indian institutions as per 2020 AISHE report is 49,348. Yes, my friends, it's 49,348. I'll say that's not a really big number given the the potential that we as a country have. Uh, but yeah, as of now, those are the international students coming to India. So where are these students coming from? The top three countries, as you can see uh, through this slide, are Nepal, Afghanistan and Bangladesh. And Nepal by far is way ahead of all the other other major countries. I mean, 13,880 Nepali students call India their home. Now, why do Nepal Nepali students love coming to India? I have been to Nepal on multiple occasions. I have traveled across Kathmandu. I have gone to Pokhara. I have gone to the Tarai region, Viratnagar, and I have some of, some of my best students came from Nepal. And I could understand a couple of things that really motivate Nepali citizens or students to come to India. First is the visa free entry. I mean, if some of you are aware, a Nepali citizen as per the India Nepal Treaty does not require any visa. He or she is free to work in the country in India. So job opportunities are immense. The cost of education, the quality of education that India offers has is tremendous. And that's why so many and so many of Nepali kids come to India and be here with us to study and make their future. The next country is Afghanistan. Uh, we all know uh, 
the unfortunate circumstances currently prevailing in Afghanistan. But as per the 2020 numbers, there were about 4,500 students from Afghanistan who called India their uh, home, almost a second home. I am, was privileged enough to be a part of OP Jindal Global University and see a lot of Afghani girls coming and making their careers uh, at Jindal. Uh, I hope they can still continue doing that. I'm not really sure if those numbers still stick because of the current socio-political environment in Afghanistan. But again, some of the best students that I met uh, were from Afghanistan and my heart goes out to them and especially the girl students of Afghanistan. I hope the situation for them improves soon. And the third country, my favorite is my Bangladesh where we have 2200 plus students coming in every year for various programs across India. I think Nepal, Afghanistan, Bangladesh. Uh, I've been I've been to Bangladesh on again multiple occasions, been to Dhaka, Chittagong, been to schools, have a lot of extended friends from the community as part of my Bangladeshi network. And and the fourth country that I, I can't uh, miss is Bhuta, Bhutan. Uh, wonderful uh, visits to Thimpu and Paro to recruit some really, really nice students uh, from that part of the world. Amazing. And and the fifth country that I want to quickly talk about is Sudan. I mean, a lot of my Indian universities I see traveling to various parts of Africa, but really a few of them have got an opportunity to travel to Sudan. I, for one, have never been able to travel to Sudan, although I have traveled to about 15 countries in Africa. I have traveled to East Africa, West Africa, Central Africa. But Sudan was, I've been to South Sudan, by the way, but Sudan was one country that I, I couldn't travel to during my days at Ashoka and Jindal. But if you are interested in recruiting African students, Sudan should be first, even before other countries in Africa. So I hope this gives you an clear understanding of where these foreign students are coming to our campuses from. And which programs? India majorly uh, is a undergraduate market. Close to 75% of international students coming to our campuses come for undergraduate programs, uh, which, is, which is great. I mean, they are coming at young age. They are going to be in our uh, campuses for longer time. They are going to live uh, live in the country longer and make make their own careers and lives in this uh, beautiful nation of arts. And then we have the postgraduate programs. Almost about 20% of uh, uh, of the students, international students coming to India, are coming from for post graduation programs. And I'm including postgraduate diploma, which is separate here, and the postgraduate program. So about 20%, and then the rest are for different. Uh, certificate programs, PhD programs, MPhil and integrated program. And if you see the gender wise segregation of the students, you'll see mostly it's the male students who are coming to India for most of the programs, apart from the certificate program where you have more girl students coming to our campuses. That's an interesting insight into the international student mobility to Indian campuses. And what are the courses? The top courses that international students come to India for are as follows and no prizes for winning the IT hub of the world. The IT back office of the world attracts a lot of students for its BTEC programs, engineering programs, 9503 students called India their home for studying engineering. And then second was Bachelor of Science with 3,900 students and followed by BBA, which attracted 3,290 international students. And then rest again, it's BE, which is Bachelor of Engineering, about 2,500 students, and B Pharma, which is again a science program, which is about 2,400 students. So if we even if we look at the split of the programs that these students are interested in, you will see there is a clear cut bias for science related programs, engineering programs, tech programs. So if you are an institution that has those kind of programs, you will really be uh, be in the minds of these students because they are actually looking for these programs. While if you have majority of programs which are more inclined towards social sciences, that the pool that you can talk to 
can be a bit smaller than what a science force can attract, right? So this is an important slide for all of you to understand that if you have these programs, then you should be doing international outreach. And where are these students going to in India? India is a large country. Um, we are the seventh largest country in the world. No prizes for guessing. Bangalore, uh, the IT city, the education city also for us. Karnataka, the state which uh, has Bangalore as its capital, attracts 10,231 students, followed by Uttar Pradesh, which I am assuming most of these 5,000 students will be going to Noida, which is a suburb of Delhi. It comes under Delhi NCR and then followed by Punjab, which has some few really good private enterprising institutions, which attracts 4,966 students, international students. And then you have closely followed by Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. I think Punjab really has done really well in attracting international students. I've been to Punjab on multiple occasions, universities such as lovely professional university, Chandigarh University, Chitkara University. Maharashtra is home to the international student uh, magnet uh, in India, Symbiosis. Uh, and then there are a few other private institutions also in Maharashtra that are doing pretty well. And Bangalore has multiple institutions that have been really well in attracting international students. I mean, I, I remember for a fact when I used to travel, there's the university which is used to attract a lot of good international students, Jain University, right? And then you have the old war houses of uh, Manipal group that attracts a lot of good international students. Tamil Nadu attracts a lot of international students through uh, uh, universities such as SRM, VIT, I mean, top quality institutions. Kudos to them for attracting such uh, numbers of international students. So that gave you an idea. That was my quick uh, five minute presentation. Uh, now, if you have, if you are interested in international in outreach, if you want to understand in detail whether your institution should be doing international outreach, what kind of programs you should be going to, what kind of fee structures you should be offering to international students, you should be reaching out to me on email, which is my here uh, or my Twitter ID, which is written here. Thank you so much. Have a good day and please make sure you see this video before popping on to that flight to Dubai.